Okay, let's see if I cannot blow out my rectum while picking up this box. I've spent months looking for one of these bad boys. And when I finally found one, all I had to do was take out a couple of mortgages on it. So now that we finally have it here after long last, let's get it out of the box and see if it was all worth it. So it seems as though the Canadian border agency has taken some interest in this package. Um, yeah, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if I'm on some watch list at this point, considering all the weird crap I imported into the country. Uh, but yeah, let's open it up. Okay, so this is one of the more rattly boxes I've ever received. So I am, I am well concerned about the state of this very expensive old case in here. Um... We got a handwritten note. Oh, no way. David, love the channel and all that you do. The content's great. This is a bit sentimental for me as it's the first case I've ever bought. Purchased it all the way back in 2011. I was only 19 at the time and was getting into custom computers. If it's used on a video, can I get a shout out to my future twins? They'll be named Ethan and Ellie. Aww. And it would mean the world to me. Thanks again for your purchase. Kind regards, Paul. Oh, Paul, that's so nice. Thank you so much for the letter. Uh, congratulations on the twins. That's super exciting. And I hope that you that you have all the best luck with them. <laughs> I really need to start hiding my identity better while buying stuff online. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so now there's pressure to be gentle with this, <laughs> with this case. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Okay. Oh, I'm really excited. Look at that. Oh, you can see straight through the case. This really is the ultimate airflow case. For the uninitiated, this sweat-drenched jockstrap of a case is the Antec Landboy, which was initially released back in 2010. Now that may not sound like very long ago, but case design has come a long way since the days of baby Linus unboxing videos. However, I think this Antec case may have aged very well. So let's see if I'm right, or if I'm some nostalgia drunk fool. It looks surprisingly new yet old at the same time. It's, it's really interesting. Now if you have a closer look at the front, you can see there are these mesh panels that have a very, very open mesh. Like this does not restrict airflow at all. Uh, these panels actually seem like they're modular. So you can see that there are like extra screw holes in here. So I think you can set this front up in whatever way you want. Uh, I quite like the way that it's set up here though. Moving around to the side, you can see that this is basically an open air case. I mean, look at these gaps between the actual mesh panels. Um, you're gonna get great temperatures in here, but dust is gonna be a complete nightmare. On the top, we've got some space for what looks like a 240 millimeter radiator mount, and we've got some case handles. So this case is gonna be pure porn for a nerd on a budget. But let's open it up and see what the internal configuration looks like. The side panel's a real pain in the butt to get off. There's actually six screws you have to undo to get it off. Oh wow, you can really open this up and then you're just left with like a metal frame. Now in here we've got what I'm assuming is all the accessories that you need for this case. This is... Oh, this is like a little box for screws. I really like that. It's got instructions for grounding. I've never seen that in a case before. That's interesting. This bag is labeled fans, so I'm, I'm guessing there are some fans in here. And then down here, we've got some, some fan blades. Hmm, that's, that's very useful uh, with, oh, here, here is the actual fan that the fan blades came out of. <laughs> it is very open plan in this case. And part of that is because of how modular it is. Cause this comes from a time when you could mount like 10 hard drives in every case. Uh, but here it's, it's all modular. You can remove the hard drive cages and that's why it can be so open. Although, uh, cable management is going to be really difficult in here because, you know, you can route a little bit of cable around the back here, but there isn't actually a hole up here for the CPU 8 pin. So we're going to have to route that around somehow. Around the back, the first thing that you'll notice is the infamous liquid cooling buttholes that you have here. Now, this was a very common feature back in the day, and it was like a minimum requirement for a case to be considered liquid cool ready. 
Ah, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> this is definitely a remnant of the past. And then another thing that you'll notice is we've got a bunch of screw holes here. So I think you can actually remove this whole back of the case. Let me, let me take it out and, and see what's going on here. <laughs> One thing that I've definitely noticed about the case is there is a lot of screwing that you have to do with it. Everything uses like four more screws than you'd imagine it would need to be held in place. See what happens here. Oh, you can take this whole back out. Okay. And it seems like the motherboard tray is also... Oh, yeah, look at that. The motherboard tray is also removable. Actually, come to think of it, I think this was quite a common feature back in the day for higher-end cases, so that you could remove the motherboard tray, mount the system to it, and then slide it into place. Although, with a case this open plan, that seems a little bit redundant, because it's not really difficult to build in here. It turns out you can also use it to mount the power supply in the top of the case, for some reason. And then down here, you've got a uh, power supply cage, which seems to also be removable. So you can mount your power supply in here. So with that quick overview out of the way, I'm going to reassemble the case, and then we're gonna build a PC in it, which I'm really excited to see the end result of. It turned out really well, actually. It's got a nice grizzled, manly look to it. It looks a bit like it was designed by Caterpillar. And I don't think that's entirely due to the fact that it's yellow and black. Um, cable management was actually not as difficult as I was expecting. You still have pretty much all of the power cable runs on display, but considering that we have these nice sleeved cables, it adds to the aesthetic. I really like getting to see the river of power cables running through the case. It looks, it looks pretty cool. Temperature-wise, as you'd expect, everything's looking really good in this case. Now, I don't really have any reference for that 5900X, as I've not used it in different systems before, but that Strix RX 580 usually, in other cases, runs from the low to mid-60s temperature-wise. Whereas here, after an extended gaming session, we were sitting in the mid to high 50s which is a bit better. But we knew that was gonna happen, right? This is as close to just being an open air case as exists on the market. Now, dust is definitely gonna be an issue, which is gonna make this really difficult to use as like a long-term main case. Uh, another thing is that because of how open air it is, you can very clearly hear all the fans and stuff. There's no, no noise insulation happening in this case at all. Yeah, you're gonna get very intimately aware with when your fans spin up and slow down. It's, it's actually aged surprisingly well, and I think it's quite a timeless case. Yes, it's still got telltale features from when it came out. Stuff like the liquid cooling butthole and like USB 3 pass-through cables that aren't just like a front header. But other than that, I think it's held up way better than any other old case that I've seen up until this point. Let me know down in the comment section below if you can think of a case that's more timeless than this LAN boy. Because... <laughs> I don't know, off the top of my head, I, I can't really think of one. And with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. And until the next video, bye-bye.